Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah. Uh, welcome back to another stream of Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley. Uh, let's see. Yeah. It's... It's nice to be playing this again. Uh, so just as like a little update on like some of the things that have happened since uh we are I mean you'll see hair has been dyed the uh like I've gotten a fair bit of love from my uh last one of these live streams currently cats are messing around off camera so you love that for them but yeah i also want to just give a little shout out to uh kaden uh shenandoah knapp who has made the art uh from like the last stream they drew some fan art for me i think it was like two years years ago and it was such a nice thing and then they drew more moomin fan art uh I'm going to be putting that in the little overlay in just a second. So, like, yeah. Um, let me, let's just get this game started. And, yeah, we'll throw that into there. Um, so, yeah, in my time since, I have... Uh, made the last stream i've been working on my latest like video that's been acting as like a little bit of a review of things uh presently uh this script has i've finished my draft of the script i'll probably be sitting down to record the voiceover for that after this uh, stream here. Uh, it's about 3,200 words long, uh, and to anyone who's familiar with my work, it is probably extremely unsurprising that I had, uh, gotten into some interesting and weird directions with it. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm excited to work through that so 
Uh, I'm also want to give a shout out to Froken Kiki, uh, Kiki of uh, the channel Transparency, who looked over my script and gave me some good feedback and stuff. Uh, yeah, go go watch the channel Transparency. They make good videos, and they, I don't know, I. They're one of the other few channels that has actually made, like, Moomin stuff aside from, uh, Draw Opinion Dump, uh, friend of the channel. But, yeah, so, last time, uh, we were playing through this, uh, I, we had gotten a bit further in on, like, basically the halfway point. This is a pretty short-ish game, like, it, uh... Yeah, I'm just going to be taking a little bit of time to share the, share some more stuff with the stream. So give me just a moment to do that. Uh, let's see. So we were about halfway through the, yeah, we're about halfway through the game. Full disclosure, um want to give a little thanks to uh, the people at Raw Fury and uh, Hyper Games for sending me two copies of this game uh, where I I it I almost think that they might have sent me the second copy by mistake but I am not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth on that one because yeah uh because apparently they were already familiar with my Amateur Guide to Moomin Valley video and had already, like, had me in mind as, like, a creator that they were like, oh, this seems like a person that would be, like, interested in this game. Which, you were very correct in that assessment, Hyper Games and Raw Fury. Uh, I'm... Now, I'll say this, like, uh... It's going to be a thing where when we make the, like, once I release my video, you'll be able to see, uh, like, my opinions by, how do I put this? Uh, like, it, it's definitely going to be one of those things of, like, I was going to be an easy mark for this, uh, like, no matter what the game was as like a like you know just a thing of like being the Moomin fan that I was and being a uh, like person who was you know pretty like tapped in to like some of the adaptations and stuff that they've done this game has been on my radar for a while, and I'm I'm pretty happy to see that, like, other folks have been giving it, like, some decent attention. I was very excited when my favorite uh, video game uh, podcast and one of my favorite podcasts in general, Podquisition, the, uh, pod, the podcast for James Stephanie Sterling, uh, thank God for them, uh, talked about that, and... I'll I'll be ecstatic to hear if they have uh if they further discuss this game because you know Moomin, it's a fun time. But yeah. We're just gonna pop this sucker open. Give this guy a start. Check. Hang on, just so I can show what I mean with a certain thing. I'm gonna. Whoop, gonna make it. It's gonna be really big for just a second. But yeah, I'm just gonna have that here. The GIF thing got a little bit wonky. I don't know what the deal was with that, but like, 
yeah. Like, uh, Kaden, thank you very much for that. Moomin Troll, where are you? Need to try and get my accent. Treasure, where are you? So, for those uh, unfamiliar, we have crash landed onto the Hattie Fatner's Island, uh, which was basically, uh, if you're familiar with the book uh, Finn Family Moomin Troll, this is a brief uh, chapter. No, wait. Yeah, Finn Family Moomin Troll. It's a little brief chapter that they show the Hattie Fatners. The Hattie Fatners, though, to make their first appearance, even in the very first book. I need you to focus, Nuffkin, in Comet and Moomin Land. I guess two heads are better than one. Hmm. Moomin Papa's boat! Sail is gone, though. I'll get to it after I find Moomin Troll. You need to get your priorities straight. I'm claiming the treasure for myself. Good luck finding that, Dullard. I'm better off alone. Moomin Troll must have gone this way. Oh. Looky there. Some instruments that I'm sure will definitely not go later. Can't pick up that seedweed. Ugh. I've got this scar on my face during a mighty struggle. Ah. Rumors say there's a pirate ship around here somewhere. Hmm. Ah, okay, you're just gonna say the same thing. If only I could use monoculars. I could find, look for treasure. I will say, it's a thing where I am I do very much enjoy being able to, like, uh, do all the little voices. Hey, we got some Hattie Fatners here. And a park, it appears. Hmm. Pirate ship. Could little be my be right about the treasure? <laughs> ship is wrecked, but the sail seems intact. Maybe we could fix Moom and Papa's boat with that. Gonna move any quicker, Snapkin? All right. Once again, cursory. Just very pretty game. Now, one other thing that has uh, come up, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in my uh, upcoming video review that hopefully I'll be able to have done by Mar end of March, is the ways that this game really tries to adopt a lot of the actual philosophies that underlie uh, Toby Johnson's writing compared to the other, like, Moomin games. Hello, my little Hattie Fatness. Yes. So, one of the things that came up in my research, uh, just, I don't want to give away too many of the things, but, uh, Writing this review has sent me, sent me down a little bit of a rabbit hole into the world of Moomin Academia. A lot of different master theses and, like, uh, analyses that people have made over uh, the Moomin series over the past couple of years. And one of them was a really fascinating piece that talks about the Moomin series in the context of a philosophical matter known as vibrant matter. Uh, it was a principle first coined by uh, the philosopher Jane Bennett, and uh, which has the tenet that when making certain ethical decisions, it is important to treat uh, the land and matter and stuff that we characteristically define as, like, inhuman and non-sentient as being 
stuff with its own agency. Like, the things that we don't have control over, like, should be regarded with some kind of agency. Which is something that you see a lot in Janssen's writing, as she often spends a lot of time uh, doing, like really heavily personifying uh, like the settings of places to the point where Moomin Valley can be kind of considered a character unto itself throughout the different books. And that's something that this game does a good job of matching. The footprints are leading this way. Just the idea of like being able to like uh Look at this. The fact that they... Oh. The treasure will soon be mine. Um, but the fact that they spend so much time, like, trying to give... Like, incentivize the player to explore nature in its own different ways. And the fact that they're trying to, like, uh, encourage, like, that sort of conscious thought of, like, you know, yeah, not just, like, the standard, like, oh, uh, you know, conservation, ecology kind of stuff, but the fact that it's also a notion of, like, considering Moon Valley as its own entity, as something that shouldn't be controlled, but something that should be understood, that, oh, no, it's interesting. Uh, Anyway. Ready to get your feet wet? Typical land crab. <laughs> Try using the barrels to cross. Alright. By the way, how is everybody in the chat doing? Hope we got. Uh, I'm curious to hear if anyone else has uh, picked up this game since I last streamed it. How's the treasure hunt going? Hmm. Hmm. How's not having any sense of adventure going? Alright. Great talk, little Mai. Uh... Yes. barrel out of the way. This is definitely a point in the game where uh, there's a lot more of a mechanical focus on like just basic puzzle solving and stuff like that. Um, like, this is a pretty short game, uh, but like, it... Let's see. Yeah. So... Let's get this. Ugh. Come on. It's like it could have been very, very easy for the folks at Hyper Games to like kind of just like make something like a get it out the door, very simple, basic story. But I do appreciate that they do try to ha like this is. They try to, like, add at least a genuine attempt to translate, like, the philosophies of, like, these stories into the realms of gameplay. Um, which is kind of like the ideal of what you would want to see in, like, any, like, uh, game that is kind of, like, trying to act as an adaptation over a thing. Like... A uh, great example would be, like, The Witcher as, like, a game that is taking the, like, ideals of Andrzej Sapowski's, like, novels and then translating that into, like, gameplay. So, yeah. I don't know. Oh, that would, oh that's cute. That's cute. Hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick tea break just to, like, get the pipes rolling because there are a lot of gruff voices in this game uh 
and last time I streamed, I made the great mistake of only, like, not bringing a whole lot to drink, so, yep, got the Moomin mug, got that all nice and ready, and, uh, mm. I'm drinking a nice double spice chai uh, from the Stash Tea Company. I have some more loose leaf chais that are downstairs that, and I've also been drinking a lot of masala chai uh, for the past couple of years, but like, yeah. Now, call me crazy, but it feels like this uh, little, like, if you, if you look in this uh, top right corner of like, uh, oh, other way. Like, that top right corner up in the screen. It feels like they're intentionally doing a Moomin constellation thing. I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, but, yeah. Alright, let's see what you got for me, little Aha! Finally here to help, are you? Have you found the treasure? <laughs> I'm so close, I can smell it. Oh, that's just you. Yeah, they they did they did nail how much of a little shit little Mai is at time, and we love that for her. Uh, to be clear. Uh, All right, let's see. Now, the tricky thing with this game is that, uh, oh, thank you, Sophie. I do try my best with, uh, I don't know. That's one of the most fun things I find when I stream. I don't stream as much as maybe uh, I like, uh, but it is a, I don't know. It is a very fun thing to have to like, I don't know. It's fun to do the little voices. Nicely done. Give it a few years and you can probably become a decent pirate. Yep. Uh, one other thing I will, I do, uh, like about this game is that it's, while it's clear that they are, uh, taking clear inspiration from books like Finn Family Moomin Troll, Moomin Summoner Madness, and, uh, Tales from Moomin Valley in this game. Uh, like, a lot of these adaptations of Moomin from, like, different, like, the different tie-in games have mostly been, like, stuff that tied in with Tanoshi Moomin Ika, which makes sense since that was, like, the big, like, uh, you know, the 1990s was what, like, Moomin scholars later have called the Moomin Boom when suddenly, uh, the series gets this massive surge in popularity, uh, in places like Japan and Britain because of the 90s cartoon. Ah! What do we have? I cannot go back home unsuccessful. This better be worth it. Yep. Oh. Oh, how to fatness. Ah, uh, yes, the Hemulin. Again, uh, I, I do want to give a shout out to, uh, Kaden, uh, Shen, uh, Shendoa Nap, who's made, like, this little fan art of me, and wrote about how, like, uh, oh, like, the Hattie Fa- like, it seems notable that, like, video essayists are Hemulins because of the ways that they think and analyze stuff, but, like, uh, I don't know. It's it's cute. Oh, uh, please, the Hattie Fatners need your help. I'm kind of on a mission already to find my friend Moomintroll. Ah. Oh, Moomintroll, you say? He was just here to help me. Oh. Must have been unsuccessful, though. I haven't seen him since. Where did he go? Uh. Into the park to convince the park keeper to give the barometer back. Barometer? I don't understand anything. <laughs> Try to keep up. The park keeper has built this hideous park in the middle of the Hatifatna's territory. Looking, locking the sacred barometer inside their totem, 
A most precious item. It's been a while now, and the Moomin Troll hasn't come back. Something must have happened. Moomin Troll, I'm coming to get you. Hello, Lou. Thank you for joining us. I'm the barometer. Of course, gonna get the barometer. Although, yep. Yep. I will say, uh, people have pointed out how this is like, uh, like the park keeper, there's some fashy, uh, vibes to this <laughs> of them imposing rules and destroying the land and all that stuff. Arg! They've dug up the entire area. Probably looking for the treasure. No respect for professional pirates. Oh boy. Yep. So, and it is, it is a very funny, like, I don't know. You could definitely read some anti-fascist commentary in that. Huh. Woman troll went in there all alone. I hope I'm not too late. Hmm. Huh. I wonder if the fireflies like music. Oh boy. My kitty potato is right down below. Uh. Yeah, yeah, Sophie, uh, you can definitely say I'm a bit of a Moomin fan. Uh. Like, uh. I mean, most people kind of know me for making uh, the video essay, the Amateur's Guide to Moomin Valley. Uh, oh, that police officer looks sleepy. Yeah, uh, yeah, the Moomins have been a decently big part of my life. Ugh, oh, animals shouldn't be in cages. No one should. But yeah, that's one of those things where, uh, I don't know, this this game kind of gets into slightly anti-fascist themes, which you love to see. Tova Yadsen, knowing, like, her life and, like, her anti-fascist leanings for most of it. Like, the fact that, like, you have a game about taking down this authoritarian coded, like, group with the park keepers and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yep, yep, that was me. Uh, making, like... It's one of those things, I mean, that's part of the reason why uh, Raw Fury and Hyper Games gave me a copy of this thing, because they were like, oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> ah, damn. Uh. <laughs> well, happy to have you with us, Sophie, anyway. Because, uh, yeah. Uh, and... Yeah, so, like, Moomin's been, like, a pretty big, like, point of fascination for me for the past couple of years and stuff. Um, like, I don't know. I think it's mostly just because I f there's a lot about Tova Janssen's writing that feels, like, like, very prescient and, like, uh, I don't know. It feels like, uh... It's one of those interesting things of, of like, despite being someone who lived on the margins of society and was, like, you know, being a queer woman in, like, the 20th century and, like, kind of dealing with, like, the after effects of World War II and all that kind of stuff, like, man, pie in the sky kind of thing, like, if, uh... If I could, like, one of my favorite podcasts out there is uh, Cool People Who Did Cool Stuff, hosted by Margaret Kiljoy. It's part of the Cool Zone Media Network of Podcast, and that's a... It's a show where they essentially do historical deep dives on cool people who did cool stuff. And, like, even though, like, my video about her is kind of basically just that, uh, I would love... I would love to see, like, I don't know, it, podcast people, if you want, hit me up if you need, like, someone to talk movement at you for, like, a couple of hours. I will absolutely do it. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> Get dunked on, scrub. Uh, let's see here. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, for those who are joining the stream for the first time, a uh, little full disclosure, uh, the folks at... Oh, hang on. Uh, hello? How are you? Very much trapped in a cage, thanks for asking. Just like all the other animals here. Anything I can do to help? Well, removing the park and freeing me would be a start. I've seen them hiding objects beneath those hideous statues. I get the feeling it must be something important. Alright. But, yeah. Yeah! Disrespect your surroundings. I'll circle back and get the other statue. Uh, but, yeah. As I mentioned, uh, just, you know, full disclosure stuff. Uh, the folks at Raw Fury and Hyper Games have set, like, have provided me this copy of the game. Like, uh, I mean... It's, it's a thing where I definitely, I was gonna buy it, like, oh, how do I put it down? There we go. Like, it's definitely a thing where I was gonna buy this thing day one, like, no matter what. So, like, uh, like, again, this is a game that's very, very tailor-made to me, so anyone who's looking forward to my review, it's, I mean, it's not gonna be, objectivity is overrated anyway, but, like, uh... Def it's definitely something where, like, you know, I'm not gonna still want to be transparent about uh, the fact that they gave, gave me a copy of this game. But it is uh, fun that I am a hashtag Moomin influencer. Moomin influencer. That must be the Hattie Futner's barometer. Broken glass and signs of struggle? If the parkeeper has touched a hair... Oh. If the parkeeper has touched as much as one hair on Moomin Troll's hairless head. Alright, man. Mm-hmm. Mm. I will say... That is one of the soup cooler parts of this game in terms of, like, its design. All the hardy partners have reunited with their barometer. Finally! Take this drum as the symbol of my gratitude. May it help you with the... It may help you with the local wildlife. Thank you. I've actually been looking for one. Yes. Good friends. Good friends. They're, uh, just like... Uh, Toby Johnson and Vivica Bandler were good friends. Now we need to track down Moomin Troll. No, well, okay. Well, Sophie, I'm not going to get, take part of historical revisionism. Uh, it's true. They did have the, uh, some of the illustrations in Comet and Moomin Land did depict, uh, like, Moomin House with a map of Snufkin and Moomin's room, but future editions did have them, like, not living together. So, gotta respect canon, but, you know, they can still be good friends. I hope you're better now. Well, do I know you? You all look kind of the same to me. Doesn't matter. Enjoy your freedom. <laughs> oh, you too. I will say that is one of the more fun voices to do. There's something about talking in a very intentionally low voice that I find relaxing. Mm. Hello, Thunderwolf. Thank you for joining us. Uh, oh, shoot. Did I done goof? Oh, wait, no. This is the direction that I came from. Okay, it's fine. Uh, like, in terms of, like, 100%ing this game, like, uh, so, like, 
I no, it it's very well designed, Lou. Uh, I definitely agree. It's it's one of those things where, um, movement troll went this way. It's one of those things where I really appreciate uh, the fact that it has like the same gameplay loop of like a standard stealth game, but translating it into like non-violent stuff while still having like a pretty satisfying gameplay loop is like it's pretty neat. I feel like uh, you know people complain about like oh the cozy game kind of thing, but like it's neat. Oh well. Moomin Troll! Snufkin, help me! By the power vested in myself, I'm taking you back for imprisonment to Moomin Valley. Hmm. Mm. Did you say that? Yes, the park keeper just arrested poor Moomin Troll. Huh? Oh, not that. The pirate ship. Enough of this pirate nonsense. I need to go after Moomin Troll. Somehow. Hmm. Exactly. But Moomin Papa's boat is nowhere without a sail. Mm -hmm. Luckily, there's a perfectly good sail on that pirate uh -huh. ship. And most likely, a perfectly good treasure. So, how about we work together? Oh, by the way, you gotta appreciate my little drummer, drummer boy. Just don't slow me down, okay? Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, like, people sometimes poo-poo, like, the, like, cozy games, you know, talking about, like, oh, it's just, like, filthy casuals and farm simulators and stuff like that. But, like, I, I find this space very interesting because... Even though, yes, a lot of it is about, like, mostly capturing, like, certain vibes. Uh, are they siblings? Oh, yeah, half-siblings, because Mimble and Jockster are uh -huh. Snufkin's mom, and I don't know who little Mai's dad is, but, yeah. I'm the brains of this operation. Yes, supposed to be the muscle. Let's see if we can find some help. But, yeah, it's, it's a thing where, um... Oh yeah, no, cozy game games are great. Oh, maybe you could have a look in this tiny cave. Ha! I'm on it. You're too portly to fit in anyway. Like, uh, yeah, because as I said, like, uh, cozy games, like, there is a, <laughs> there is a slight degree of homogeny in it in terms of like, uh. You know, it's lots of farm sims, lots of things where it's like, oh, you open a tea shop or a potion shop so you can date a demon lady and stuff like that. All of which is great. Uh, like, and also, like, I would argue it's not any more, like, homogenous than other, like, current genres of games and stuff like that. Like... I'll take a cozy game over one of those live service games any day. But my point being that uh, the thing that I find really interesting about this kind of emergence of cozy games as its own genre is that it's one of the kind of few spaces where uh, you do see, like, a degree of innovation in terms of, like, certain kind of gameplay loops. Because now coziness doesn't inherently mean non-violent with like certain games but it does like kind of necessitate a uh like yeah a short hike is a great other example of this like this game and a short hike are a great example of how to like incorporate nice clever almost metroidvania like level design uh in the ways that, like, there's this interconnectedness in the land and the ways that it loops around in various satisfying ways. It's it's pretty neat. Uh, I agree, and that's actually something that I'm going to be... Uh, that's one of the things that I brought up in this, in my review. Hurry, time for treasure. Like, the fact that, like, uh, the inspiration mechanic of, like, trying... 
like leveling up Snufkin by looking through nature. It's one of those things where it encourages you to explore true with like some intrinsic reward of like number going up of by leveling up but at the same time they're also like producing a like yeah there's also that extrinsic reward of like uh don't don't at me if i get the game design terms wrong but like there's that extrinsic reward of like uh being able to see these beautiful vistas in like the natural surroundings while of moon valley while also like uh being able to like level up you know it's one of those little pieces of philosophy that like i think is a nice little translation of tova jansen's writing moon troll i'm coming to free you actually hang on we're gonna circle back we need to like, like, we gotta look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. Like, uh, I, the art direction of this game is just absolutely impeccable. Especially, like, uh, it effectively utilizes a principle called skeuomorphism of making things resemble, like, tangible physical objects. Like, the fact that they're able to make this, like, uh... Yeah, no, like, the jitteriness of the moon, uh, the, like, uh, the sort of, like, ink, uh, textures and the watercolor overlays you see even in the backgrounds, it's, it's real neat. I should find a way for little Mai to get over here. Like... It's still, like, a relatively... Like, it's not the most mechanically complex thing, but uh, it's still pretty cool how, A, they're able to translate, like, uh, game design that we tend to associate with things like, I don't know, Metroidvanias or, dare I say, Dark Souls. Uh, like, it's... Remind me again why I brought you... Uh, but in a non-violent context, not that, like, you know, in-game violence, not inherently a bad thing kind of stuff, but it, uh, if creeps want to cut, it's coming out of your pot. Uh, but it's interesting to see the ways that, like, uh, I don't know, I think it's... I think overall it's a pretty good thing that we're able to see a lot more variety coming out in what is expected in our games. Like, uh, the fact that you're still able to have, like, a pretty satisfying game loop and some, like, interesting and cool game design without combat being necessarily, like, a, uh, requirement and stuff. Pretty, pretty neat. Cool and... I think I'd, lo I'd love to see this in more games. And I'm also very interested in seeing what Hyper Games ends up doing next. I know people are going to, like, most people only heard about uh, Hyper Games because of, like, this game. But uh, when I saw the announcement of them, I did check out their previous game, uh, Morkred. Uh, it was on Game Pass. It was this cooperative, like, uh puzzle physics adventure game thing that was pretty neat. Also, uh, sorry if I'm not reading the dialogue because I'm going into tangents, but... Oh no. This game, it provokes thoughts. Brings out the Hamulin in me. Yeah. Oh. Also, uh, chat, let me know if, like, the audio levels are alright. The, uh, last time I streamed, I made the game, in-game music was a little bit loud. Uh, not, not to a bad degree or anything, but it, 
watching back through the VOD, I, I did notice, like, oh, levels were a bit high. Uh, oh, wait, where am I going? What am I doing? But, yeah, let's see. Where to now? Ah. You know, I probably don't need this rock, but... Right. Yep. Hopping on lots of trees. Uh... Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, uh, well, I think I was interrupted, is that this... something interesting about this game is that uh, a lot of other, like, most people's touch point is the 90s anime, Tenoshi Mumin Ika. But I, something I do appreciate is that the art direction and the vibes of this game and some of the characters they include seem way more directly influenced by, uh, the, like, comics, uh, that Tove and Lars Janssen made, uh, as well as some of the picture books like Who Will Comfort Toffel, uh, and the book about Mimble, Moomin, and Lil Mai. Yeah, it's... Oh yeah, I... That's... Well, I mean, there was that one, like, animated version of like, who will comfort Toffel that they made in, like, the 1970s. It was 1970s or 80s. It was, like, a an hand-animated thing. It was only released around in Sweden. It's, uh, but it has, like, weirdly enough, it has, like, this prog rock kind of soundtrack thing. It's, if you can find a, com a copy of, like, the, uh, hang on, I'm gonna double check, uh, let's see, Will Comfort Toffel. Uh, yeah, there was an LP I album made in 1978 by the duo, uh, by the acid psych prog rock duo Peter Ludband and uh, Torbjorn uh, El Elkland. It is, yeah, no, it's it's a cool time. Uh, they kind of got a little trippy with it, and yeah. Uh, but no, Sophie, I would definitely recommend it if you enjoy the art style of Who Will Comfort Toffel, because this one was like hand animated, and it does a lot to like directly translate the visuals of like the original picture book. Uh, it's one of those things where like, um, like a lot of Moomin Media, it's kind of a shame that. Uh, we haven't been able to get, like, some of the distribution of it in places outside of Finland, Sweden, Japan, England, and other kind of European countries. But, like, it's a thing where people, like, uh, if you look for it, you can find it. Uh, that said, uh, I don't know. Uh, one persistent comment I do get on my... Oh. Oh, yeah, you're in for a good time then, Sophie. Uh, that's one of those things where... Congratulations, you saved a frog. Now can we get the treasure? The pirate cave. Hurry! Ugh. Also, shout out to the music in this game. Ah. I love me a good ambient soundtrack. Look, the treasure is probably inside here. <laughs> Find his keepers. Be careful. Sorry, I accidentally. Ah! <laughs> hmm. That didn't sound good. Stay still. I'm coming for you. <laughs> If you leave me to die here and take the treasure for yourself, I'm coming back as a ghost to haunt you.
A lot of people are fixating on how Sigaros did, like, some of the collaboration for the song, but, uh, I... Oh, dang it. Oh, I had her name. Hang on. Uh, Oda Tilset, who was, like, one of the other, like, uh... Don't get me wrong, Sigaros did, like, contribute to, like, some of the big, like, songs for this thing, but, uh... Also did a lot of like some of the background music stuff, which I don't know. It's this cool blend of synthesizers and organic instruments, and they also talked about specifically wanting to use woodwind instruments in order to fit like the uh, the vibes of Snufkin, which I think is pretty neat. Not a bang on my drum. has like the chat window. Ah. Hope little Mai's alright. I must say though, I enjoy the silence. Savage. Ah. Here you Yep. Here you go, Sophie. Here's the moon again. Uh, I, I do legit love that little, like, ink paper etching design. I'm, as someone who, like, if the, uh, overlay is not enough indication, I also am a big fan of some, uh, skeuomorphism in my design. Like, I like trying to, I don't know why, but I like trying to emulate the look of, like, paper and stuff in order to, like, give, like, a sense of tangibility. Uh into the things I make. Yeah, it's a vibe. I don't know. So, needless to say, looking at the art direction of this, it just makes me very intensely curious at, like, what kind of, like, specific effects they utilized in order to, like, do this. Like, for example, with Snufkin, you see this little white jittery, like, outline, which is kind of meant to match, like, the brush strokes of, like, uh, like a pen outline kind of thing. But... Like, the way it jitters and it changes in slight size and shape and stuff, like, if it was something that was being made in, like, After Effects or, uh, like, uh, Premiere, it would be, like, they're probably using, like, a little bit of turbulent displacement in order to, like, slightly warp it, uh, and stuff. This, I know this game was made in Unity, so I'm... Not a game dev, uh, not, so not as familiar with, like, graphical overlays and stuff like that, but if it's, like, a similar principle, oh, no, no, oh, gosh darn it, come on, wake up, let me off, okay, come on, uh, I will say, like, this is a very minor gripe, uh, and stuff. Sometimes the little, uh... Yeah. Oh, turbulent displacement is like an output setting thing. Good to know, yeah. Like, I mean, as someone who's, like, designed some things, like, most of my, uh, experience around game design stuff is in the realms of uh, tabletop RPG stuff, like being the Forever GM or designing, uh, the, uh, Infinity Train tabletop RPG. Shameless plug there. Uh, it's, it's something that seems, like, pretty cool. Um, like, I don't know, like, if I was to ever, like, try and make a game or something uh it would definitely be something where i could definitely make the art and stuff for it but i ugh. 
programming is. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still listed on, uh, you can find the Infinity Train tabletop RPG on henrycathman.itch.io. It is pay what you want. Uh, it's a simple powered by the apocalypse uh, system. It's one of those things where I sometimes think maybe I should revisit it to like refine some of the design because uh, yeah, I mean Unity and Blender, like I, I've messed with Blender a little bit, like mostly just so I can like, uh, like I made a little, mostly to like uh, rip uh, 3D assets from like some old games and like make pictures out of that. Uh, hey, uh, but like, it seems like Unity is pretty easy. Although I hear better things about Godot lately, thanks to like some of the that the bad business going on at Unity as a company. Uh, but I don't know if I ever decided to make a game. Uh, it would probably be a point-and-click adventure game. That's kind of like, I don't know. Those are like kind of the sensibilities that I have. And like, programmatically, like, uh, I don't know. Those seem like, you know, Making any kind of art is gonna have its own challenges and stuff. And literally any time I start a project of a thing, it's always with the uh, hubris being like, oh, this one will be pretty easy. Uh, so like, like to give you guys an idea of a basic arc of like things that I make, uh, there's the idea stage where I think like, oh, this might be a, this is a good idea, and this thing will make it a little bit easier, and I can probably finish this a bit quicker. And sometimes that's true. Like, there are certain things that are easy, but then there's, just because of, like, how I go about doing things, I, I usually end up adding, like, some extra layer to something that adds a layer of complication, and then likewise, makes it oh okay cool so you could jump over there or something but yeah you know, whatever uh that ad there's always something that adds some complication to it like when i first started designing like the infinity train rpg i was like oh powered by the apocalypse is pretty simple like all i really have to do is like make the character classes and oh whoop hmm seems i'm stuck uh, what a surprise. Little Mai has come to the rescue. But, yeah, as a result, like, always something that, always good to know. Like, yeah, the thing you make, there's always probably going to be something that makes it a little bit extra complicated. Thank you. I... I appreciate that. <laughs> See, that wasn't so difficult, was it? Now get, now don't get all sentimental on me, or I'll regret not leaving you down there. Love you too, little my. There it is! Oh, sweet treasure. It's... it's... Empty? The treasure has been confiscated by the Park Keeper? Ah! I'm fuming. Pirate ship, and the sail's intact. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I'm so happy that your wish came true. Yeah, that's... Sophie, that is what the youths call a mood. You think that you're doing a simple thing, and then it just expands as you begin doing it. Yep. Not always the case. Um, it does... I mean, with this uh, Snufkin review that I've that I finished writing, uh, it was a thing where, like, writing it overall was, like, simple. The main thing that got complicated about it was trying to write, come with a good thesis. Because, like, with my videos, I don't want to just, like, uh, you know, say is game good, is game bad, and stuff. I, I try to, like, give everything I do, like, at least some kind of an educational, like, kind of bent to it. If not, like, totally educational, like, at least something to, like, give people, like, a little extra something to think about outside of just the thing itself. And that ended up resulting in me going down a big old research rabbit hole of, like, reading different, like, analyses of, like, Toby Jansson's work over the years, and, like, comparing that to, like, my thoughts on the game and stuff. Anyway, that's it. Let's go back to Moon Papa's boat. Ah. Oh, that pot keep is gonna get it all right. Ah, love, love that little satisfying, uh, ladder noise. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there is someone who's, like, tried messing around with the rocks and stuff of, like, saying, like, oh, at what point do, like, does the game, like, despawn certain rocks so it doesn't, like, crash the game? I'm, I, I'm not gonna do that, because I don't wanna... We got things to do, but... Hmm. Wonder... Oh. Hmm. Well... Might have been, uh, making things a little bit too complicated. <laughs> well, I'm based around a version. See, I mean, making a version of Monopoly around climate change, better than real Monopoly. Ayo! Yeah, no. Oh, a sight to behold. Nothing can compare. Hi, how are you? Huh? Oh, I'm fabulous as always. Uh -huh. How can I not be when I'm the most deep down, when I know deep down I'm the most beautiful creature in existence? Well, I have to admire your confidence. Hang on, let's get some lighting on me. Uh, well, uh, uh -huh. I bet. There's nothing in the world that can match my beauty. Really? Nothing? <laughs> Go ahead. I dare you to try to find something that equals my allure. I'll give it a try. Rules and game design is one of those tricky things. Uh, especially when you want to try and make things thematic and stuff like that. Uh, Definitely more than possible, but it does require a degree of, I think, consciousness, like, and deliberacy that sometimes can be difficult. Uh, oh, that's not the way I want to go yet. Going off the beaten path. Ah, Moo and Papa's boat. Let's see if the sail fits. Never mind. Not gonna go that way. Always, always go the opposite path that the game wants you to go down. Uh, that's how you find the secrets. Oof. What do you got, Chad? What do you think? This, is this a sonically pleasing experience? <laughs> uh, how about this? Huh. Well, 
This is the prettiest thing I have ever seen. Yes, it's a quite beautiful mirror. Really? No! My reflection, of course. Uh -huh. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to spend some time alone to admire it. Oh, very well. Goodbye, then. Okay. Oh, okay. Teleporting movement. My cool. Perfect match. Ready to teach that park keeper a lesson? Oh yes, let's get out of this treasureless swamp. Yep, hang on. First things first. Secrets. Secret finders. at least one more of these. Yeah. Just gonna double check, cover the bases. Oh. Oh, he's just saying what he said before. I guess that's, I mean, I don't want to be, it's one of those things where, uh, ah, God, I dare, yeah, okay, there's nothing else. Uh, like, I, it's definitely, like, a thing where this game, it's not, like, perfect. It, it would have been nice to have it be a little bit longer. Uh, I would have been... I think it might have benefited from, like, giving us a little bit more time on characters, but, uh... <laughs> I mean, you know, I feel like that's what Snufkin would want. Ah. Uh. Hell yeah. Sea crimes. Hmm. Nope, nothing to say. Huh. Have you heard? The park keeper arrested Moomentro. Huh. He's keeping him in his mansion, east of here. I'll give him a piece of my mind. That treasure whoring Moomin kidnapping no mannered meddler. Okay, but yeah, we're now back at Moomin Valley, and now we got our little drum. Uh, let's see, I need to get, um, so there are a couple of things I need to do. So now that we have the drum, uh, there are a couple of new areas that we can explore. Uh, get some of that seaweed for the muskrat, so we can uh, do some cooking. There are a couple of other areas. Uh, yeah, let's see. Where is it? Oh, yeah, that's where Stinky is, because uh, Ninny was kidnapped. Oh, hey, Mr. Ghost. Look at me, so scary. <laughs> All right, thank you for your contributions. Um, Now, I have almost 100% of this game achievement-wise. I did miss out on one of the achievements. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, where I need to figure out a situation with the butterfly. Moomin Troll is imprisoned by the park keeper. Uh, faded things about him. Yeah, he does have the old flower crown from the comics. They do include also, like, I have not bought it, but they did make this little bit of DLC where you can have an even more flowery crown. It, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, feels a little bit tacked on, but whatever. Um, do I have enough? Hello again. Oh, hello. I should probably invite you to sit. Is that an invitation? Hmm. I guess. So. Huh? So. Huh? If I just had some chanterelles and a pulsini, I could make a nice huh? stew. Perhaps you could get me some. Sure. Stew sounds lovely. Hmm. Oh. You wanted some too. All right. Hmm. 
Muskrat is one of those dudes who takes us a philosophy 101 class. Thinks he knows everything. Hi there. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bit weird. I mean, you know, do what you got to do, I guess. Uh, may, I wouldn't be surprised if that's kind of like a little standard thing, but like, Snuffkin, just who I need. Do you have a moment? I need some new butterflies for my collection. Three, to be precise. Uh, surely I can help you. Okay. Now, this is a quest that I did not complete in my first playthrough of this thing. Uh, I could for, could not for the life of me find this. Oh, no water. I can't paint without water. Hi there. How's everything? <laughs> oh, terrible. I can't paint without water. <laughs> and what's a painter who does not paint? <laughs> Nothing. I can try to help you find some water. <gasps> oh, really? That would not only save the day, but my entire artistic reputation as well. <laughs> You can use this jar to collect the sacred drops. Changes all the portraits in the game. Oh, I mean, I mean, yeah, if you want to make Snuffkin look like he's smoking that dank kush, that might be worth the 99 cents. Or however much they're uh, charging for the DLC. Uh... I'll let you know, uh, I the main thing that messed me up with, like, not finding the butterflies was that I uh, accidentally got to this point of no return section in the game uh, where they, which they've thankfully patched out uh, since. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Put that right here. Using our big boy brains. Uh, yeah, physics. Gonna get that. Put down the ladder. Speed run strats. Like, I'm assuming, like, this, the butterflies are just hidden in, like, some of the bushes or something like that. You again. Yep. I found a better spot. But it does look like these mice want to go home. Uh, seriously? Well, I'm not moving again. This drum has a way of making you move. I must admit, that was quite enjoyable. I'm glad. Now it seems everyone's happy. Yay! Level up! Uh... Where's the other... Eh. Come on. Gotta love a sp sassy Spidey. That's it. I have enough water now. I've been thinking. Maybe I should learn an instrument as well. I hear the harp is great for eight-legged creatures like myself. Great idea. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, we're just gonna futz around a little bit in Moomin Valley until, uh... I think we're gonna... I think just like last week, I'm gonna keep, keep this guy to two hours. Um... Hey!
Okay. Beehive is a little bit close. Hey, hey! Oh. Or I... Silly me, I was thinking like, oh, I, I need to go all the way to the other beehive that's like all the way over there. Whoop. Uh... Oh, wait, that's right. Snork Maiden's here, and I need... She needs her little... Little Bengal. Don't you have more important stuff to do? Don't you? Huh. No. And now I've got something you need. I'll trade you for it, but it won't come cheap. Surprise. Hey. I'll be needing a new toy. Sniff's probably got one. Uh -huh. Not that Cedric thing, though. It seems too needy. Noted. I'll put this on top of my list of priorities. Ah. Is that sarcasm? Snufkin, I'm so proud of you. Here you go. A Hemulon toy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, perfect. Ah. And here you go. Uh, what did he give me? Oh. Another thing of the play. If the butterflies are where I think they are. Uh, let's get these ferns. I know there's the last chanterelle mushroom somewhere around here. But this is a, but yeah, this is one of the interesting game design things about this game that I find very interesting in the fact that there is such a priority in just as a player, like, looking at the natural environment. Like, uh, Sophie, that uh, comparison you made to a short hike I think is pretty apt, actually, as that's something that, um, like, yeah. Oh! Yeah, I'll let you know if I need a hint. I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock out some of the other quests I do know, uh, like, with the butterflies, uh, in that case. But, yeah, it's a thing where, like, uh, something that is a kind of common kind of problem you can sometimes see in certain types of games, especially nowadays in this age of, like, large open-world exploration kind of titles, is that there is this kind of need to, like, focus on making the environment super big or super realistic, but it doesn't, at the same time, like, oftentimes, it doesn't feel personal to the player. Like, it doesn't feel like something that is worth exploring. And, I don't know, I think that's something that, uh, like, it, it's really... It's neat when, like, a game is able to get you to appreciate and fixate on the environment of the game for its own merits, not just because of, like, basic navigation stuff or basic, like, ex like rewards of, like, experience or currency or secret items and stuff. Like, it's, it's one of those, like, uh, ideas where... Uh, you know, being able to appreciate the, like, you know, the beauty of nature for its own merit is something that, like, I don't know. Something that I like seeing. More games, do this, please. <laughs> There's Stinky. Stinky, what are you holding? Aww. Ah, just some new clothes I got. Those aren't yours. <laughs> As if I care. Catch me if you can. Get drummed on, fool. Tired yet? 
Not at all. <laughs> Come on, Stinky. Give me the rest of the clothes. Never. Ah. <laughs> Thief! Speak for yourself. I will never forgive you. I think I can live with that. Savage. Absolutely savage. Love to see it. One other little detail I do like how as uh, you level up, the song becomes a little bit more complex and a little bit more uh, like the melody ends up increasing. The melody of Moomin Valley, if you will, uh, becomes a lot more prominent and stuff. A little... Hmm. This feels like the area... Ah. Oh. Yeah. Man. There's another. Oh, almost missed that burn. Uh, God, I just need the one more. Like, I just need one more chanterelle. Maybe I should check my map. Snuffkin, I, I do what I want. <laughs> That's not very cash money of you. Yeah, well, it's a thing where it seems like this game is, like, uh, like, it does seem like a predecessor to, like, stories like, uh, like, Moon Valley in November, or, oh, wait, that's right. I don't know. Uh, it, it does make me interested to see if, the, like, by all accounts, this game does appear like it's selling decently well, and it's been getting a lot of good critical reviews and stuff like that. So, like, if they do decide to make, like, a sequel to this game, I would be interested in see. Yeah, they it, it is a little prequel to, like, The Invisible Girl and Who Will Comfort Topple in those kind of regards. Uh, speaking of which, I know, I know how Topple's around here somewhere. Just gotta find that mushroom, though. check my inventory. How many do I have? Yeah, okay. Because I have all these porcinis. Just need a chanderelle. Oh, wait a second. Ow. No, that's the way to the beach. Hang on, let's check this map again. Hmm. Oh, well, you know what? While we're at it, might as well go visit Minnie. Give her a close back. Just so that, uh... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got... Uh, Nini. Oh, there you are. Here you are. I think that was all of them. <laughs> oh, thank you. This was truly kind of you. My pleasure. Now, I won't be stepping on your toes by mistake. Thanks for helping me out. 
Anytime. Yay. Yeah. Neat to see. You do love to see, like, some of these uh, characters being translated in this way. Uh, it's kind of a thing where, like, if they were able to make it longer, I would have... It would have been neat to see more uh, things with Nini or more story beats. Like, um, because this game is so short... Uh... Yeah, no, it, it, I like... Hi, Magnus. Uh, it It's a pretty good time. Um, and, yeah, it definitely has, like, uh, like, the art style for this game is absolutely impeccable. Uh, I think, like, they did a very good job with that. And, yeah, I think... Oh, no. It's neat to be able to see more games do things like this. Okay, where are the... Rick is this last I'm gonna lose my mind finding this last chanterelle. Hey. Thank you. I was noticing like the music has seemingly been kind of absent lately. Not that that's a bad thing. But uh it is some pretty good background music. Ah, the old theater. Pity it isn't being used anymore. Like, I do like this game acting as like an interpret reinterpretation of basically Moment Summon or Madness, albeit one without the like, uh, I don't know, the flood element and stuff like that. Ironically, kind of doing the opposite of Moon Summer Madness, where its problem was a overabundance of water as a result of flooding. This game has a lack of water. Oh no. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, I know I have the ban- Well, so- Well, if we're gonna knock out some more of these quests, uh, let's- Head back down to the painter. Because I remember Snork Maiden's uh, bangle being somewhere up in a nest somewhere. I need to remember where to find that. But, yeah. Let's see. Here you go. A jar full of water. <gasps> oh, is it really true? I can finally paint again. <laughs> Here, please take these scribbles in return. I'm not really one for literature anyway. What will you paint? Oh, oh at the moment, I'm leaning towards a single dot. A dot? Oh. Well, not just any dot, but a dot of exceptional brilliance, of unparalleled greatness. I can't wait to see it. Listen, Snofkin, you of all people should not be snobs about modern art. Like, uh, let's see. I know there was another spot. Uh, I'm just fixating now and just trying to find this frickin' chanterelle. Getting some stew is, the, like, the thing that's going to increase my stamina bar. And it's a thing where, like, initially, like, you think, oh, this is, like, pretty generous. But then, like, by the end of the game, this thing is going to get upgraded like crazy. And it's, oh, stark difference. Um, have I been down here? I think I have. Yep, I have been down here. Yeah, that's one of the tricky things. I'm like trying to remember what I've, I've done in the week since I last played this. Oh, boy. Um, I 
it's it's weird that they make the porcini so easy to find, even though they're like a later recipe. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I think there's... I feel like my main area that I'm missing is like somewhere around here. Because there's like... that there's like the ladder down to the beach that I didn't unfurl for some reason. So I at least got that. Um hmm. Where the heck is slash chantra? Uh because it's not it's not up the mountain. Like, I recall it being somewhere up in this northern area. Because there was another, like, little thing that could only be passed by with the drums. That is somewhere. Ah, there we go. See? The fact that there is this... Yes, there we go. Like, it is a... Like, this game is so very expansive. Even though it's not a very, like, big game map or anything like that, it, it is definitely capturing that thing of, like, feeling lost in nature. Like, the fact that, like, so, like the fact that, uh, honestly, like, one thing that could, like, have better, like, kind of translated that kind of feeling might have been, like, uh, just removing the little hat icon from the map just to, like, so that the player would have to, like, look for, uh, like, some of the other, look through the natural landmarks and stuff. Uh, to answer your question, Sophie, I have played a couple of the other Moon games. I've played the Game Boy Advanced, uh, not Game Boy, the Game Boy Color game that was released in 1999. Uh, I believe it was just called Moomin's Tale. Uh, it was... It was a, you know, that's a game that was, like, kind of a simple platformer thing. Uh, apparently, the European version was a lot more complex. No, the Japanese version was a lot more complex and, like, uh, interesting. Uh, where there was, like, much more of a focus on dialogue and stuff like that. Stuff that was cut out in the European versions, unfortunately. Um, there also been some of, like, the point-and-click, uh, like, child activity games. Uh, friend of the channel, Kiki from Transparency, is a much bigger expert in, like, the, uh, in the realms of, like, the Swedish, like, Moomin games, but the only other main, like, Moomin game I've attempted is the 2008, uh, Nintendo DS game. It was, like, Moomin and, like, the Mysterious Howling or the M Magical Game or whatever it was called, translated from Japanese, uh, that I, I attempted it, and I did not get very far because I do not speak Japanese, and that is a game that, like, being so dialogue-heavy is def desperately kind of in need of, like, a ROM hack situation. Uh, it, it does look pretty neat. I do like the little, their little rendition of the 1990s anime theme song that they did for the, like, uh, opening. Anyway. Uh. Here you are. Hmm. Ugh. Interrupting my thoughts once again. Thanks, I suppose. They were getting a bit heavy. So, what's happening? A lot of things are happening all over, at any given time. You should learn to be more specific. What's happening with you? Right here. Right now. Well, I'm sitting here, with an empty stomach, waiting for you to make sense. That's been a recurring theme in my life lately. Let's eat then. 
Now you're making sense. Thus, actually solving two of my current problems. With that out of the way, it's time to start worrying about the next meal. I'll do the thinking while you do the looking for nettles and porcinis. Yay, stamina increase. And I've already done this. Come on. You sure took your time. Remember, always take some time out of your day to prioritize others. Yep. Like doing this. Like I'm doing, feeding you all the time. Oh, thank you, I guess. On that note, here are your ingredients. They seem harder to come by than before. Don't worry, you'll get your thanks. That wasn't what I meant. Then uh, what? You should be more specific. Seems like nature is... Thank goodness, the food is ready. Ah, I can feel my energy ri levels rising again. I wish I could say the same. You've taken a considerable amount of energy out of me with your troubles. As if I didn't have enough to worry about on my own. I think I'd like to replenish my energy with some seaweed. I expect you'd want me to bring you some. Bingo. Alright, and bam. I'm back with some seaweed. I suppose you want some wisdom in return. Luckily, as a wise philosopher once said, me, by the way, Sharing wisdom does not diminish it, unlike food. Oh well, I guess you'll have some of that as well. Just remember to pay it forward. Ah, thank you. My energy seems to be improving once again. I have to get going now. Moon Valley needs me. Moon Valley needs all of us, not just you, Snufkin. Oh, okay. I'll keep that in mind. See you around, Muskrat. Yay! Alright, um... So that leaves us with the butterfly stem. Hmm. You know, I think it's at this point. Yep. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. It says, open Hemulin by collecting three butterfly. So, all right, let's head back to the Hemulin. So I didn't spend a whole lot of time in that area. Uh, hang on, let me make sure that that's the... Okay, cool. Uh, and... Oh, wait a minute. Hang the heck on. Oh! Hey. Well, never mind. Uh, guess back to the Hemulin. I'll be with you in a second, Toffle. Hey. <laughs> Good, you found one. Two more to go. All right, so probably gotta just frolic through this little field then to find them butterflies. Hello there. Oh, hello there, Wanderer. Oh, I hope you yeah, didn't disturb you. Can I help you with anything? It looks like you're the one in need of help. Ah, uh, uh, yes, it would appear so. Sorry. How did you end up here? Uh, oh, uh, that's a long story. I've got time. Uh, for me? Well, I left my lonely home searching for a friend. <laughs> then I found one, a potential one at least, a message in a bottle. But that's a start. Miffle is her name. Miffle. But as it turns out, the world outside can be a scary place as well. Last night, I heard some horrible howling, so I fled up this tree, which seems to have upset these bees. Now I'm afraid to climb down. Huh. Perhaps I can try calming them down? <laughs> really? Oh, if it's not too much of a bother.
That's it. Go. Oh. I... Uh, I... I can't. Why? Uh, I'm scared. Well, then I guess you'll have to stay here. Uh, perhaps that's best. Uh. I'm safe here. Uh. And I've got nowhere to be. But what about that friend? Very, very in character. Oh, Miffle? She needs me! Oh, Miffle! You did it! Huh, we did. We did it together. Yes, that's often easier. Ah, thank you. And now, to see my friend. I sure hope he finds that friend. Yes, very in character for... Hey. Let's find... Alright, now to find that... Eh. Oh. Oh. For Pete's sake. Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on. Ugh. Do you hear any meowing and stuff? That's my kitty, Oslo. Oslo? Come here, Oslo. Oslo? Come here, kitty. just like staring me down. It's like also of our cats is the baby of them. So he's so timid. Great! Only one more to go. God, what was that? Oh, okay. We are gonna be closing in on two hours soon. I'm, I'm alright mostly having this session. Kind of like, uh... Oh, and switch to harmonica. Like, I'm mostly fine with this session being, like, me knocking out all the side quests and stuff like that. I can find this freaking butterfly. Got a bug nerd who wants to look at you. Might as well play to get preemptively ready. Butterfly, I'm begging you, please, make yourself present. It's in one of these big patches. Yeah, it does seem like very like RNG based in terms of like spawning times. God, that makes me very much wonder like what like the uh what speed runs for this game are gonna end up looking like. Man. I 
don't know. This is the ripping high octane gameplay of a oh man. Sure, your Final Fantasy rebirths are have sword fighting, but do you have a get? But does your game let you like frolic in a field of flowers while playing a little harmonica? Checkmate, Square Enix. Uh, okay, I think I might shift to the. I might shift to keyboard controls, because I like the mouse controls plenty fine, but like. Oh my goodness. Mr. Butterfly. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. Oh boy. Hmm. Yeah. It might be a thing where I might need to like leave this area for a little bit in order to like get the last just so I can like reset the RNG of this thing. Um which let's see. Yeah. Cause I think oh wait a minute. We can head back to where that big tree was. Where was that tree? Oh, it was a bit more north of here, I think. Because... Yeah, I need to... Because I need to find... The place where I found that last chanterelle has the uh, big tree where snork maidens, like, bangle and stuff is. Hey! Looky who's decided to join me. Hang on, I'm gonna move the camera for a little sec. Say hi, Ajlo. Yes. Little whiny little baby. Oh. You just wanted to be in my lap. Didn't you? All right, Cat has made the appearance. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Prime. Although, technically, it's not theft; it's reclamation. Um. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Also, it... Yeah, our second cat potato is somewhere around here. I wouldn't be surprised if he's sleeping downstairs. Yes, uh, Oslo, O-L-S-O. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's just a little cuddly boy. All right. I swear if these freaking butterflies are not going to show up. Because I feel like... Because uh, they flew off. It makes me worried that, like, if you don't catch them, they're not going to respawn. Even though, like, surely that, that can't be the case. Okay, well. Well, we can at least, like... Eh? No. and crannies and little side paths that, like, could be very easy to miss. Because, I don't know, I think it's neat. 
Yeah, it would suck if they... Like... Yeah. Mostly because, like, the main reason I wasn't able to get those flies... In the those butterflies in the first place is because the other flies were, like, stopping me. Oh, well. Hmm. Oh, hi, Snuffkin. Oh, Snork made him. What's wrong? Well, everything. Or, well, maybe not everything. But a rude bird came out of nowhere and stole my precious anklet. So, at least something. The anklet is very dear to me. Now I fear I'll never see it again. Here you go. I found your anklet. <gasps> really? Thank you so much, Snufkin. My pleasure. I don't have much to offer in return, but maybe you can enjoy this incoherent text I found. Oh. That looks like one of the pages from Moomin Papa's masterpiece. Thank you. Yay. I'm pretty sure. How many of these do I got left? Yeah, 16 pages. I think that's like... I think there are like 20 in total, maybe? Uh, oh. Gotta be very thorough in this game. <laughs> about to get further inspired. <laughs> yeah, the admittedly the little cursor at the bottom uh, hand telling you where to go, that's a feature that I I don't know, I haven't really used that one that much. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, might as well. Might as well head to the park keeper's place and maybe stop by the flower fields one more time. Maybe the thing is that I just need to be not running while playing music. Because I'm just gonna give a one silver on the field. Uh Uh, let's see. I can... Please, game, I'm begging you. I'm begging. Oh. Hmm. There was a knock at the door. Uh... Looking around here, let's get to. Yeah, uh, got hat, hat hair on my face. Hold it right there. Uh, yes. Do you have a permit for looking so suspicious? Uh, huh. Good one. Now, where was I? Uh, uh, yes. No passage. Turn around. Please release Moomin Troll, I'll give you cookies. Oh, my dear son, doing a hard time. Ah. Mm. That's the final boss of this game, Butterflies. The game's up. Hand ah. over the treasure. Oh, and Moomin Troll too. Hi, Moomin Troll. Hello. Hi, little Mai. Snuffkin. Oh. Please, Mr. Parkkeeper, we just want our dear child back. Moment Troll is being held on charges of vandalism and standing in the way of progress. There's nothing I can do now. I don't make the rules. Oh, actually, I do, but rules are rules. Progress? What progress? 
You've removed the river, destroyed nature, and driven the animals out? <laughs> well, you lack vision. Imagine this place when I set up my irrigation system. I'll bring water up to all the parks. I'm building the valley of the future here. Enough. Release movement rule or else. Hmm. Or else what? Oh, you'll find out. So... So glad you're here, Snuffkin. <gasps> Snuffkin, do something. Oh, I'll do something. I'll do all the crimes. Ha <laughs> ha. Insolence! Oh. Hmm. Ah, Snuffkin! What could I do for you? I'm an artist, not a fighter. Oh. Moomin Valley and Moomin Troll. Seems I've taken them both for granted. Huh. Huh. Snuffkin, I've missed you so much. How are you? I'm much better now that i found you. Now, let's get you out of there. Hmm. Oh dear, I'm afraid that might be difficult. Hmm. You see, my cousin's quite rigid when he's made up his mind. Don't worry, Moon Troll. I'll find a way. <laughs> you always do. <laughs> halt! There must be some way. Hmm. My cousin, the park keeper, keeps the keys to the prison guarded in his mansion all times. However, he almost never leaves the house, except when on official business. Oh. Or when he goes to see a play. Oh my, does he ever love theater. Hmm. The theater, you say? Snufkin, I have an idea. I can't tell you here. Mm. But meet me by the old theater, and I'll fill you in. I think I know what the plan is, and I like it. Yeah, so I think... We are just about closing in on the two hour mark. So I think that's gonna be about where I'm gonna wanna call it. As a stream, um, well, I'll, I'll stream this guy, ag this game again next week. Uh, probably same time Saturday at around noon. And yeah, we'll, um, We'll be able to uh, finish things up from there. Uh, I think, like, there's plenty of stuff to still be seen in this game. Uh, we basically have, like, the little final quest thing and, like, some of the final side quest stuff. But I think, yeah, I think we'll end things off there. But in the meantime, uh, yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, Sophie. Uh, this was this is a pretty fun game. I and and also it's it's always a good time to stream. Um, uh, it's I don't know, it's one of those things where maybe when I have a little bit more free time over the summer, that might be a thing that I might do a little bit more because I enjoy this. But yeah, in the meantime, uh, thank you for watching alongside this. Uh, keep an eye out for my. Uh, official review that I'm going to be hopefully my goal is to have it done after Mar by, uh before the end of March and then I'll be finishing up my uh, I finished up my script and I'm going to be doing my um, like yeah and I'm going to be doing some like uh, voice work for that and yeah we'll be able to go from there uh in the meantime, just cursory plugs. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done those obligatory kinds of things. Uh, consider, like, chucking me a buck on Patreon. That's what pays the bills. Uh, there's also a new $5 tier where you can request the uh, junk drawer essays where I've produced my little one-minute essay video essays about any kind of topic. Stuff that can't necessarily fit into a full video essay, but I still have opinions on. 
Um, and yeah, I think that's gonna about do it for us. So I hope you all end up having a good rest of your week. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Best wishes.